Hey everyone, uh, so I just want to go through an example of uh, dealing with the reciprocal of a linear function, talk about a question with that. So let's say that we wanted to state the critical properties of f of x equals negative 5 over 2x plus 4 and then sketch a graph of it. So the critical properties that we talked about are the y-intercepts, the x-intercepts, uh, the horizontal asymptote, and vertical asymptotes. So let's, let's start with the y-intercept. So the y-intercept uh, is going to occur when uh, x is equal to 0. So we're basically just finding f of 0. So f of 0 equals negative 5 over 2 times 0 plus 4, which gives us negative 5 over 4, or negative 1.25. So that means that our y-intercept is going to occur at 0, negative 1.25. Okay, let's do the x-intercept. So the x-intercept occurs when y is equal to 0, so we sub 0 in for f of x. We get 0 equals negative 5 over 2x plus 4. We're going to multiply both sides by 2x plus 4 to get rid of the, the denominator, times 2x plus 4, times 2x plus 4. When we actually multiply these, we get 0 equals negative 5. Now, clearly this makes no sense. 0 can't equal the negative 5. Uh, and what that means is that we get no solutions to this equation, which means that there are no x-intercepts. Okay, let's talk about the horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote, you might recall, is uh, the line that tells you what y value uh, the function will be approaching, but, but it won't actually touch. So we know that the function is not going to uh, achieve a value of y equals 0, right? There is no y value equal to 0 that this function gets because there are no x-intercepts. So that means that the, uh, the uh, horizontal asymptote in this particular case is just going to be the x-axis, which is y equals to 0. Okay? Uh, the vertical uh, asymptote is next. So the vertical asymptote is going to be, is going to be located where, uh, at the x value, which makes the denominator equal to 0 in our uh, rational expression here, or in our rational function. So we're going to take our denominator, 2x plus 4, set it equal to 0, and we're going to solve that and we end up getting an x value of negative 2. So our vertical asymptote occurs at x equals negative 2. Okay, so this is actually be uh, most of the information we need to sketch this. So let's start. Uh, I'm going to start by plotting the y-intercept, which we know is at negative 1.25, which is approximately there. Uh, okay, next, uh, how about we plot the vertical asymptote? So let's see, that's at negative 2, so negative 1, negative 2. Uh, I'm going to place a pale pink line for my vertical asymptote. There we go, so there's our vertical asymptote. All right, so um, the vertical asymptote separates the function into kind of a couple pieces here. So we have stuff to the right of our vertical asymptote and stuff to the left of our vertical asymptote. So to the right of our vertical asymptote, the first thing we want to consider is whether the function is going to be above the x-axis or below the x-axis. It can't be partly above and partly below because that would create an x-intercept and we know there are no x-intercepts here. So we know it's going to be either above or below. Now you're going to notice that we already have a point to the right of our uh, vertical asymptote. We have our uh, y-intercept. So that means that to the right of our vertical asymptote, we know that the function is going to be below the x-axis, so we're going to kind of fill it in like that. So the function is going to kind of look like that to the right of our vertical asymptote. To the left of our vertical asymptote, though, we're not completely sure. So we should decide if it's positive or negative, and one way to do that would be to take a point or an x-value to the left of our vertical asymptote. So our vertical asymptote's at negative 3, sorry, at negative 2. Why don't we choose negative 3 as a test value, so to speak? So we're going to check for f of negative 3. So let's see, we get negative 5 over 2 times negative 3 plus 4, and we get a value of positive 2.5. So that tell us, tells us that the function is going to be positive to the left of our vertical asymptote. So that means that it's going to look kind of like this. Okay? So this is the sketch of it. Uh, now, we're not completely done yet because I do have another question that I would like to ask about that. So let's, uh, let's go to another page. So here's our graph, and right? here's the graph that we had. Uh, and the question that I want you guys to consider, or that we're going to consider together, is uh, to describe the behavior of f of x as x approaches the vertical asymptote and as x approaches positive infinity and negative infinity. So we haven't done an example like this yet, but I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to consider the behavior as x approaches the vertical asymptote. So let's just do a little title there. So as x approaches the vertical asymptote. All right, so here's the thing. One thing you're going to notice uh, is that our vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 2. 
Okay, so we might want to consider uh, the behavior as x approaches negative 2. But here's the problem, okay? Uh, x can approach negative 2 from the left side, so coming from this way, or it can approach it from the right side, coming from this way, right? And we're going to get two different answers. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to talk about how uh, x uh, sorry how the function uh, behaves as x approaches negative two from the left side and as x approaches negative two from the right side. So to indicate that we're talking about how x approaches negative two from the left side, we're going to say this. So as x approaches negative two, and then we put a little minus sign as a superscript. So as that means as x approaches negative two from the left. And then if we want to talk about how x approaches negative 2 from the right, we're just going to have a little plus sign as a superscript. So that's going to be as x approaches negative 2 from the right side. Okay, so let's talk about how x approaches negative 2 from the left side. So uh, that's going to be uh, this stuff over here, right? That's going to be as x approaches uh, negative 2 from the left side over there. You're going to notice that the function looks like it's going up and up and up and up. So as it gets closer and closer to negative 2, the function, the y value, is actually going to approach positive infinity. So we're going to say as x approaches negative 2 from the left, y approaches infinity. Okay, so as x approaches negative 2 from the, from the right, well that's going to be what's going on over here. Okay, and you might notice that uh, in that case, it looks like the function is going down towards negative infinity. So as x approaches negative 2 from the right, uh, we say that uh, y approaches negative infinity. Okay, so this is the behavior as the function, or sorry, as the x value approaches the vertical asymptote. Let's take a look at the behavior as uh, x approaches positive infinity and negative infinity. So that'll be our next thing here. So as x approaches positive infinity and negative infinity. So first of all, as x approaches positive infinity, well, let's see, as x goes towards positive infinity, that's going to be as the function goes this way, right? And that means we're going to be talking about this stuff here, okay? So you're going to notice that as x approaches positive infinity, the y value of the function approaches the horizontal asymptote. And we know that the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis, which is at y equals 0. So as x approaches positive infinity, y is going to approach 0. Okay, uh, next let's talk about what happens as x approaches negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, well, that's going to be where the function is traveling in this direction. Right? And that means we're going to be talking about this stuff, right, as we kind of follow along there. Uh, what well, you're going to notice that as x approaches negative infinity, right, it looks like the function is approaching the x-axis again, just from, you know, from the, uh, the positive direction. Right? And that means that we're going to say that y approaches 0 there as well. So guys, this is how to describe the behavior uh, of a rational function as it approaches the vertical asymptotes and positive and negative infinity. Take care.